We've got more arena news in Arizona. The coaching carousel continues to turn, and the weekend is full of games, even if the Super Bowl is going to cut into Sunday's schedule. All that and more coming up with me, Gil Martin, and Rachel Donner on this episode of the Locked On NHL Podcast. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. I am Gil Martin of Locked On Islanders, and with me, uh, as we do every Friday, my co-host Rachel Donner of Locked On Flyers, and also been very busy with the Olympic coverage. So, Rachel, how are you holding up? It's been really fun so far. The Olympic hockey has been pretty exciting. The women's tournament quarterfinals are getting underway and the men's tournament is kicking into high gear. So uh, come on over and listen to us as we complete the Olympic journey. Yeah, you guys have been doing a great job of covering it and it is on the Locked On NHL feed if people are looking for it. And I want to thank everybody for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are, as always, free and available on all platforms. So, Rachel, we have got a a lot of news around the league right now. And uh, let's start in Arizona, where the Coyotes, we knew this was kind of coming down the pike, but now they made it official. They're going to spend the next three seasons starting next fall uh, in a college rink with a capacity of about 5,000 people. Yeah, we talked about it last week on the show as well. And the Board of Regents of Arizona approved the plan. So the Coyotes will officially be playing at that Arizona State Arena. And I think one of the most interesting aspects of the deal is that the Coyotes are going to pay all of the costs up front for the additional building work that has to be done to make it NHL ready, as well as build locker rooms and visiting locker rooms. And they're going to pay the full cost of the term of the lease for the arena up front. They have, the university has absolved themselves of all risk in the situation. And they, they also (laughs) built one year extension options into the deal in case, the Tempe arena deal for the Coyotes long-term doesn't happen. Makes sense. And, you know, look, from the school's perspective and from the Board of Regents' perspective, considering the issues the Arizona Coyotes have had with their rent and with their taxes, I don't blame them for asking for the money up front. Not at all. I mean, it's a high-risk situation you know, given everything that's happened with this team. And there's no guarantee that the Tempe, you know, permanent arena deal is going to happen. But I guess that's a a bridge they're going to cross later when they get to it. I I think for me, one of the other interesting aspects of this story is the branding of the arena, because in theory, there's going to be a giant pitchfork at center ice for Arizona State. And, you know, is that what the coyotes are going to play with and how are they going to deal with all of that as far as banners and spacing and there's so many little details to work out and uh it's it'll be uh i don't know fun is the right word but it'll be a fascinating story to follow you know the, the other thing is and i would have to think that the uh nhl players association isn't thrilled with this if only because the revenue from ticket sales will go down and the cap won't go up as quickly because the building's capacity is so low. Yeah. And I wonder how they're going to work out season tickets and seat placement and, and all of those little things. I I was kind of thinking in the back of my head earlier today that, Um, I I have this thing where I want to go to all the NHL arenas and like new ones keep popping up. So my list keeps getting longer (laughs) and I'm like, am I going to have to go to Arizona and try and get a ticket in this, you know, potentially 35 to 4,000 seat arena (laughs) to complete my list? (laughs) Yeah, that would be uh, a little bit of a challenge. Now, if you 
get a press pass and you cover a game in the press box, does that count for your? Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. So you could probably do it that way. Maybe. Maybe. O- always room for one more in the press box. No question about that. And and you could probably see the Flyers uh, if, if you time it out right. Yeah, it's always good to go to Arizona in the winter. <laughs> no, no question about that. So, uh, you know, overall, I think, you know, if the Coyotes are going to stay in the desert, this is a positive development, but it's not without its challenges. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no doubt about that. Uh, the coaching carousel, we, uh, we wanted to touch on that and a, a lot of things moving around with that. Uh, let's start with uh, Edmonton. And uh, they make their move. Uh, what What are your thoughts? Did, was this firing, you know, expected? Too late? Too soon? What, what What are your thoughts about it? I mean, it's kind of this long drawn out tragedy in Edmonton, in in a lot of ways. In that, you know, they've gone through so many coaches in this McDavid era, and I think I saw something where. Um, you know, they, they've gone through, you know, eight coaches or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. And as far as, you know, all those number one draft picks they've had, and there's been so many systems changes and, and coaching changes. And um, I think some people were joking, at least in my part of hockey world with the, you know, the flyers, like, do you blame the coaches or do you blame the players? And you're kind of looking at the Edmonton roster with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. And you're like, you know, like, should we strip the C from Connor McDavid? And it's just kind of like all absurd at this point. But yeah, Dave Tippett, his record since they got off to that great start was seven, 13 and three. They're fifth in the Pacific and you know things were just not clicking for them there was just some sort of disconnect that required them to make this change and it's just it just seems unbelievable at this point how often they've had to do it yeah I mean you know to me I look at Edmonton and you go back what is it about seven eight years ago where they had the top pick in the draft or very close to it for a number of years in a row And the one reason I think that this team struggles the way it does is they drafted the same type of player every Mm -hmm. year that they had that top pick. And instead of going for the big defenseman or the, you know, the goalie, they always went for the offensive guy. And I, I think their roster is not as balanced as it needs to be for them to win consistently as a result of management more than anything else. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it where, you know, if you get that number one pick, you have to pick the obvious number one pick in the draft. And then you have a lot of similar kinds of players, like you're saying. Well, you could always make trades. You could always uh, either deal the pick or deal players after the fact. And, you know, they, they haven't done that. They've sort of stuck with that same, you know, top rated offensive player year after year. And and I think it, you know, it's one of the reasons anyway, that they've struggled the way they did. We've got more coaching uh, things to talk about before all is said and done. But first want to talk a little bit about Built Bar. By this time of year, I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Rachel, have you tried the Puffs? Because if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors like yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. So good, these are going to be your new favorite. And all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Most Built Bars contain just 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, but they pack 17 grams of protein. At Built Bar, they they are all about the taste, and they make it taste delicious first. 
then figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how they do it, but they pull it off every time. Go to Built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. So, Rachel, uh, again, you know, Edmonton, not the only team making coaching and, and front office moves. Uh, let's talk about some of the others that, that have been going on over the last couple of days. Yeah, so obviously the big story in Montreal was them finally firing Dominique Ducharme and replacing him with Martin St. Louis, who has no coaching experience other than his kids, youth hockey, and uh, of working with John Tortorella as a consultant in Columbus for a year. And, you know, he's coming into this as a a player's guy, right? And he just wants to work with the players as he would have wanted to be worked with. And I think it's an interesting approach. He's coming in with the interim tag and uh, Jay Woodcroft, who is in Edmonton, is also coming in at that interim tag. And I was looking around the league and thinking about it. Right now, there are six interim head coaches in the NHL right now. So aside from Woodcroft and Martin St. Louis, we have Dave Lowry in Winnipeg. We have Mike Yo with the Flyers, Andrew Brunette in Florida, and Derek King in Chicago. And that just seems like an extraordinarily high percentage. Yeah, I mean, we're we're roughly halfway through the season. And, and look, and y- y- you factor in COVID and all the unusual things that have happened. Chicago and Florida were really because of the whole beach scandal that, that right. really sort of forced hands over there. Uh, but yeah, it's unusual to have this many interim head coaches. And you sort of wonder how many of them will earn the job on a permanent basis. I mean, you look at Montreal, St. Louis, certainly a name. Uh, certainly the fact that he is, uh, you know, French Canadian doesn't hurt him in, in the culture there. Uh, his lack of experience may hurt him, but the way the Canadians have been playing so far this year, he has nowhere to go but up. Yeah, I think so. I think this is sort of a blank slate for him. And it's one of those things where they're either going to sink or swim. And uh, the rest of the season is going to be his job interview, essentially, which is the case, I think, for all of these interim coaches that we're talking about. But I think there are definitely some rather than others that are more likely to keep their jobs going into next season. And I think it's also going to throw a wrench into the annual coaching carousel and what the market looks like in this upcoming off season. Yeah, no question about that. And and I mean, look, if you're Martin St. Louis, just stabilize this ship and you probably look pretty good. Uh, you know, get, get them to win, you know, get get 40% of your available points and, and you look great compared to what's been happening so far this season. I, I would tend to think out of all of the coaches that have the interim tag, things are looking pretty good down in Florida right now. I would say so. I would think that he's the one that's most likely to keep that job going into next season. Uh, I'm not sure about Derek King. I think there's a, a, you know, the jury is still out there a little bit, but, you know, Chicago kind of has fits and starts this season. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of drama behind the scenes with that team and so they may want to do another cleaning house or maybe they feel like they already have and Derek King is part of their future but uh, that's still a question mark to me Mike Yo is absolutely a question mark right now I think that you know he is guaranteed through the end of the season but I think they're going to look at the the market and see what's available and kind of compare it to Mike Yo and Mike Yo may want to go somewhere else and interview other places I think that's going to be possible. You know, there'll probably be other positions open as well. Um, And I'm also not sure about Dave Lurie, what his fate will be. Yeah, those are interesting situations. And I mean, uh, with Yo, I mean, you you obviously would have more insight to that than than anyone else here. Uh, 
what do you think he needs to do to be asked back? I mean, to solidify his position in the minds of management. Uh, it's, uh, it's that's a, the sixty-four thousand dollar question. I think I would say I think he prob they probably would have already had to have been winning more at this point. I gotta say I think that it feels like he's doing everything within his power to try and get this team to play together. And he is brutally honest after games and, and he'll say, yeah, that was a terrible game. We did, we did nothing right. We did, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's refreshing and it's nice. And it is good that he knows exactly what's wrong, but the team isn't turning it around. And so it, I think that there's just going to be a, a serious rethinking of things. And I, I don't know that he's going to be part of that solution moving forward. Now, we also had some big front office news out in Vancouver. And uh, I was excited about this. I know you were excited about this. And Cami Granado, now an assistant GM with the Canucks and a uh, little, you know, that, that that's a big deal. And, and you know, Cami is certainly well qualified to do this what are your thoughts about this opportunity for cami granado i absolutely love it i love everything that the connects are doing right now with their front office i think they're being creative and they're looking at the full breadth of candidates instead of the usual suspects that have been sort of making the rounds around the nhl for the last 15 years and so obviously cami granado is a hockey legend she knows the game She was the first woman inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2010. She's the all-time leading scorer for the U.S. women's team. Uh, I'm, you know, given stick taps to the Canucks for poaching her from the Kraken. She's been a a scout for them and doing really good work from what I understand with the Kraken. So I was honestly surprised that um, the Canucks were able to, to steal her away there. Uh, but, you know, if you look at that hire along with uh, Emile Kassenge and Rachel Dory, that's three prominent women in hockey management that got hired by the Canucks in recent days. And I love it. Yeah, it's a, it's a great step forward. And, and kudos to Jim Rutherford. I mean, here's an old school guy who has been a part of the National Hockey League uh, g- going back to his playing days in the early 70s and mid 70s. And yet he's making what would be considered a pretty bold, progressive kind of a hire. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a little surprising, but, <laughs> you know, I think there, the expectations in Vancouver are very high because things have been, they've been on the cusp of doing something for so long and they needed something to get them over that hump. And I just think the the creative thinking they're doing with the front office um, well, maybe lead to them being able to get somewhere. Yeah, uh, I and mean, best of luck to Cami Granado. I think uh, it's a great opportunity for her, and it's a great hockey market out in Vancouver as well. So uh, we'll see how this plays out, but I think it's a great opportunity, and uh, wish her the best of luck. Absolutely. Well, we'll ha- have a look at the weekend ahead of games and if you're looking to bet on any of them bet online has you covered this season with more props odds and lines than ever before even in football as the playoffs reach their end this weekend with the big game betonline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores podcasts and news this season and it's not just football BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops, the NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right. <clears throat> so this weekend, the schedule a little light on Sunday, and we'll we'll certainly get to that. But there are some some interesting games tonight and Saturday. And, you know, to me, let's start with Edmonton because, you know, they're hosting the New York Islanders and it'll be the first game that they're playing under their new interim head coach. 
Yeah, and, you know, having that game at home for them with the new coach, I think, will set the tone for what the rest of the season is going to look like. So how are you feeling with your Islanders being the opponent in that situation? You know, it's not good timing. <laughs> that, that's what I would say. I, I think that <clears throat> there is a lot of uh, attention going to be paid there. there. There'll be, there's usually, usually when you get an interim head coach, there's that little boost that the change itself creates where everybody feels a little less pressure. They exhale, things have changed. You got to impress the new coach, make a good first impression. And teams tend to play better, whether it's for, two or three games or sometimes, you know, five, seven games, whatever it is, not good timing for the Islanders, but the Islanders really do need to win this game if they hope to get a, you know, get it, that small chance they still have of getting back into the playoff hunt. Yeah, that's, that's a tough order to fill. No question about that. And then Winnipeg is uh, visiting Dallas in what should be a good match up between those two teams battling for playoff spot. Yeah, I think that the Jets are ultimately going to be out of it, but the Stars are still in it. And I think the Jets would like to play spoiler to that as well. And, I, you know, Dallas is, they're trying real hard, but um, can't seem to crack those wild card spots yet. But this this could be the start of something for them, I think. Yeah, should be uh, should be an interesting game, and then Saturday uh, got a few good games to look at. Let's start with uh, Toronto and Vancouver. That will probably be the early hockey night in Canada game, a seven o'clock Eastern time start. And you know the Canucks sort of coming back down to earth after the big pickup they had when they hired Bruce Boudreaux and. And Toronto in the thick of things in that battle in the Atlantic division for the top spot. Yeah, it's always a good rivalry between those two teams. And, you know, regardless of where they sit in the standings, it's usually a pretty intense game. So definitely a good one to watch. And then 8 o'clock Eastern time, the Carolina Hurricanes visiting the Minnesota Wild, uh, an East versus West situation, but both of those teams quality uh, franchises in, in the hunt for top spots in their respective divisions. Yeah. The wild are currently in third place in the central. So, you know, they're kind of on that line between in and in the wild card position. So they're, they're in a pretty good spot right now. And Carolina is of course atop the East right now in the Metro division. And, so I think this is a good test for both of these teams and the competition should be really good. And, you know, both very fast teams, you know, with a lot of uh, goal scoring machines there. So I think that it, that should be a really fun game as well. Sunday, uh, only four games on the schedule, two of them at 1230 Eastern time, one at one thirty, and the latest one starts at two to me, that late latest game is the best on the schedule. The Avalanche visiting the Dallas Stars. And, uh, you know, we've talked about Dallas. They're kind of fighting to get into the playoffs. And Colorado, boy, they, they are a fun team to watch. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like maybe I should start watching some more Colorado games just because of the rumors around Claude Giroux, but, <laughs> um, which I am very sad about. And just thinking about it, but yeah, they're an exciting team. And, and honestly, you know, should they decide to trade him and, and Giroux decides to waive his no move clause, that wouldn't be a terrible spot for him to land given everything with the talent on that team. And uh, again, I think that they have a real good shot of, of getting to the Stanley cup this year. Yeah, no, they they would have to be one of the favorites coming out of the West, no question uh, about that. And then, of course, the reason that there were no games after 2 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday is uh, we've got the Super Bowl coming up. So uh, any thoughts you have about the big game in L.A.? Yeah, you know, I think it should be fun. I'm just excited that Tom Brady is not in it. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not the only one thinking that way. Yeah. Although I just, my heart, I think wants the Bengals to win just because, you know, they've been long suffering and I, I feel like uh, Los Angeles just doesn't like lack for successful sports teams. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Look, the Bengals have never won the Super Bowl. They've been there twice, they had yep. their heart broken both times by the San Francisco 49ers. That uh, is true. You know, I, I would like to see the Bengals pull off the upset. I think this will be a fairly close game, but if I had to make a pick, I, I think the Rams are deservedly the favorites. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a huge football person, but I always like to uh, – check in for the Super Bowl. It's it's always a fun time gathering and and watching the game and seeing the ads and stuff. So, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be good and uh, you know, hopefully spend some time with friends, family and uh some good food and and just enjoy Super Sunday as it were and of course, we will be back uh next week. We'll have our usual Friday show. You've got all the Olympic shows coming up. Why don't you tell us about those? Yeah, so we're, like I said, we're in the medal rounds for the women's tournament, and the men's tournament is knee deep in the preliminary matchups. And, you know, we could be looking at another USA Canada final in the women's tournament, and that's always exciting. And, you know, I'm having fun getting to know these non NHL men's teams. There's a lot of NHL prospects. Uh, we did a great preview episode on Wednesday's show for the tournament from the perspective of who the NHL prospects are on each of these teams. And so I highly recommend listening to that one. I, I do too. You guys have done a great job of covering the the Olympics, uh, both the men's and the women's draw. So keep up the good work. And, and uh, again, that is available on the Locked On NHL feed, wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. want to thank everyone again for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On Bets. It's your one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. It's hosted by your boy Q with expert insight and analysis by Lee Sterling. It is free and available on all platforms. Rachel, always a pleasure to do this show with you, and and, and thank you so much for uh, for being here with me every Friday. It's a uh, I, I enjoy the time we spend together and, and always great to talk hockey with you. Back at you. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll be back hosting the Monday show and uh, always check out Locked on NHL. We have our experts from around the NHL talking all things hockey. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And thanks for listening to the Locked on NHL podcast.